<laughs> Listen, you, you know all about Boston. You have faced them. Porzingis, people don't watch Washington. Porzingis had a great year at Washington. How do you match up with him when you've got Tatum and Derek White? I, I, to me, when I'm watching the television, Nick, I think Porzingis is just a problem to face. He certainly is. He uh, First of all, you get the switch on him and he gets somebody smaller. He's just going to do his thing, move his body around, get positioning to just shoot over the top of him. And then his rim protection is what's really, you know, I think been amazing and, and caused the Mavericks problems. But I think that this this series is really about who's keeping who in front of each other. The Mavs are having a hard time keeping the ball in front of them. And the Celtics aren't. The Celtics are keeping defensive players in front of the ball, and it's it's making Dallas's uh, offense a lot tougher than the normal. You know, Nick, the NBA did not like KD to the Warriors. So the new CBA, they created some aprons. They don't want three stars together. They want draft and develop. They'll give you a couple, but they'd prefer you draft them like a Tyrese Maxey and develop them. They don't want you going grabbing a Porzingis, getting a Derek White or a Drew Holiday, I should say. Um I do feel watching them, it's like they, they pulled a fast one on the league. They, they got to, I mean, if Al Horford's your sixth best player and Derek White's your fifth. Is, yeah. is some of this just, Nick, Boston's too good and too deep? Well, I think uh, Brad Stevens wins uh, executive of the year. And, and uh, I, I tell you what, I don't want to. I don't want to negotiate with him right now. I mean, he, he got he got Horford from OKC, White from San Antonio, Porzingis from Washington, Drew Holiday from Portland, all here in a pretty short span of time. And those guys are they they've all been incredible. You know, really, really incredible. Drew Holiday was amazing last night. Yeah, Porzingis in Game One, and and you know we we haven't even talked about you know, Brown and Tatum yet. And they're, they're obviously their best two players. You know, it's interesting with Tatum. I mean, you, you, you know, you were in the G league, you've seen young players. I always felt Jalen was a great athlete, but he wasn't quite as aesthetically pleasing. He was just such a good, strong athlete. And he keeps getting, I look at Tatum and he's so fluid. It's such a beautiful game. Um, how do you size the two? They obviously play well together, but I always think Tatum's yeah. more naturally fluid but Jalen plays so hard. He's he's got a little yeah. bit of D Wade to him. What do you make of those two? I don't know. I think there's very little difference between them as far as who's better, who isn't. I mean, they're both they're both long, athletic. Both can shoot the three. I think they're they're you know Brown obviously is physical. Tatum is awful physical. When he drives in there, he'll he'll bounce people and put his shoulder down and, you know, forearm and all that kind of stuff. I think they're both really good defensively, man. I, I they just keep getting better. And I think, you know, for me, um, Tatum is probably his passing has probably been, been the best, yeah. you know, or the biggest thing he's improved. I, you know, he certainly had a lot of chances as a young player just to kind of go, 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 but he's, he makes great reads. Now he finds the guys, obviously they got, Geez, I don't know, eight guys, six, seven, eight guys that are just going to stand out there if you give them a catch and shoot three and they're going to make you pay. And and uh, they just keep getting better. They're very, very good, very, very similar. You know, obviously, uh, Joe Missoula has buy-in. So a lot in this league, these are highly compensated players. Derek White's making 18 million bucks a year, and yet they play as a unit. I think a lot of that is Tatum, that he's a giver, he's not a taker. You guys have a lot of cap space. You have two stars, Maxi and Embiid. When you spend that, how much do you and 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 Daryl talk about chemistry, collaboration, the right fit? I saw it with the Knicks this year a little bit. Didn't yeah. have the most talent. They all bought in. How big of yeah. a factor is that? How often do you talk about that with Daryl? Yeah, uh, we talk about it a lot. Obviously, we've got a lot of a lot of cap space and a lot of a lot of roster to fill. And um, you're right. I mean, I think you know, Tyrese was amazing this year. Uh, Joel was playing the best basketball of his career, which is saying something until the injury. So I think we got two two great guys to build around, um, finding the right pieces that are gonna that are gonna be able to to space and shoot, defend and rebound. Um, have some IQ, have some late game, um, you know, moxie and, and, and guts and the things that it takes is, is really the key for us, you know, to get to where we want to go, which is 
you know, we wish we were playing now. That's for sure. Is, um, you know, what, 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 what is the dilemma? Uh, do they need another? I mean, when you look at Boston and Dallas, you're like, God, if Kyrie's off, it's all Luca. What do you do when you have, and you have one, a transcendent star, um, you want to watch minutes because obviously Dallas is good enough to get to the playoffs. Is it hard sometimes when you have a star, he wants the ball, he's a great closer, but he's wearing himself out. Looks like Luca to me is kind of falling apart. Well, I think it's, it's the balancing act. Obviously, um, he, he certainly needs some help. You know, your complimentary guys got to be really good during the game. I think, I don't know, last, last night's game's a good example. Would they go two for 17 from three other than Luca? Right. You know, that's, you know, that was a, that was a chance last night to, yeah. to be in that game and, and, and maybe get that one, but they got to, you know, it's got to be better than that. And that way you don't have to rely on him so much throughout, you know, the first 42, 44 minutes. Right. You got you got to have some some offensive defensive help for those for those superstar guys so that they do have enough in the tank, you know, in the last four or five minutes of the of the game to make plays at both ends. Yeah. You know, the um, Caitlin Clark is listen, there's no necessarily right answer. I, I said earlier in life, occasionally you are presented with a wave grab your surfboard. You don't get great opportunities in life. It could be a relationship. You meet your wife, grab the surfboard. There's the wave, right? Like I kind of feel like ladies, Caitlin Clark, get her on television. It'll quadruple. It can make your other players more endorsements, but I understand there's an, there's this feeling that, well, she's not, she's not one of the best 15 players. Olympics are weird, Nick. They're kind of political. Yeah. They're kind of, sub- I mean, Jalen Brown's not on this Olympic team. He's a top 15 player in the league. For sure. What, what, yeah. what do you do if, well, if you're naming the team, what do you do with this rising star? You love her game. I love her game. But all of a sudden over the weekend, we, this thing got tribal and political. Where do you go with it? Yeah, I, I think, listen, first of all, you know, I'm from Iowa, right? So, <laughs> so I'm, I'm like, um, I'm major. I, I flew, I flew to watch the game against LSU and, and it was one of the best things I did all year to, to see that game. Um, and uh, I don't know, it's good and bad. I mean, I think I can't, I almost can't believe it because I, I agree with you that the ratings and all the, just everything probably continues to roll on if she's on the team. Um, but I'm almost happy for her too. I think the amount of pressure she's been under, you know, going to the national championship game, you know, taking that team that from Iowa that probably, you know, never be there, never has been there at all, you know, and she took them twice and uh, right into the WNBA and all this stuff. Uh, at least she doesn't have to have another another ramp up of incredible scrutiny and pressure right. on her. But I'm I'm pretty surprised that she's not on the team. Yeah, unlike the NBA where you get drafted in some time off. At the WNBA, yeah. you get drafted to give you a jersey and you got to be somewhere in a week. So she is an ascending star. Uh, okay, you were 31 and eight with Embiid, 16 and 27 without him. Uh, you're obviously got money to spend. Have you decided your direction? Do you today know, you and Daryl know where you're going? How much is, is is these foundational moves? Do you know how much is watching other people? When did it all start? Yeah, I mean, I think it starts about about 24 hours after our, our, our final buzzer, uh, the planning of it, uh, for sure, Colin. I think that, um, you know, I think we got to explore everything. You know, Daryl is really good at his job really got a lot of trust in him and Elton brand and our owners. They, they really want to get this thing right. And, and I think exploring every option right now, but then being ready for plan B, C, D, E, F, G, H, because I think there's a lot of things that could happen, yeah. you know, um, with, with free agency, with the draft, with trades, I think it'll be an active summer. Certainly will be for us. It has to be, but I think it will be in general. Nick nurse Sixers. Great seeing you Celtics lead to all. They got better players at this point, more dudes, that's for sure. Nick, it's great seeing you again. Thanks a lot, Colin. You bet. Hi, everybody. It's me, Uncle Colin. Subscribe here to get the latest from the herd, including exclusive behind-the-scenes videos and more, wherever you may be, however you may be watching. Thanks again for making us part of your day.